AutoCAD tables can be created in three different ways. One, you could create one from scratch. Two, you can create one from Excel. And three, you can use data extraction. So this video will be talking about data extraction. Data extraction gathers information from objects in your drawing and organizes that information into a table. So here I have a drawing that has a map. And on the map, we have these little blocks. And each of these blocks has attributes. So really, any AutoCAD properties can be put into a table. But the properties that I'm going to focus on are the attribute properties. So let's imagine we work for a police department. And every day, there's a crime in the city. And when a crime happens, it's someone's job to put a block at the location of the crime. And they take that block and fill out this information. So we have this one is the fourth crime of the month, the third day of the month, the 12 o'clock or midnight, um, and the category is vehicle theft. And it's a high priority. So all this information is stored inside these blocks as invisible attributes. And so now it's the end of the month and the boss wants a summary of all the crimes that have happened this month. He doesn't want you to give the map. He wants you to give him a table of information. So again, you can use data extraction to grab information from all kinds of objects. All civil, all AutoCAD objects have properties and all the properties can be put into a table. But in this example, we're using blocks with attributes. So to create a table, you go to the annotate tab of the ribbon. We have the table panel and the table button. There is a button for extract data, but you don't have to go to that button. I like just going straight to the table button. When you click that table button, you get this window. In this window, there is a table style, and we have our three choices from an empty table, from a data link, from object data in the drawing, which is data extraction. So I'll be choosing from object data, data extraction, then I'll click OK. Next, we have an option to start a new data extraction or work on an existing data extraction. So I'm creating a new one. It's going to save the data extraction as a DXE file. So I'll just put that file on my desktop and I'll call this crimes to match my drawing file. Then we can choose a specific drawing, a specific sheet set, or select specific objects. So I'm going to use select objects in my current drawing. This is a button you can use to select. And I'm only grabbing the blocks. And I'll hit enter. So here, there is a settings button, but you'll get another opportunity to look at settings. So I'll just click next. This is your first opportunity to eliminate some of the data. Because remember, all of the properties will end up in the table unless you remove some of it. So for now, I'm going to keep all of this data, all of the defaults, and click Next. Here is where you get your second opportunity to remove some of the data. So this is all the data that could end up in your table. On the right side, these are categories that you would see in properties. So for example, the general category in properties is typically the layer information. Um, we have geometry properties, which is typically, um, like if you have a circle, it'd be the center point of the circle, the radius, the diameter, the area, that kind of stuff. So you don't, we don't really need all of this data right now. The only data I really care about is the attribute data. So I'm going to be unchecking all those extra categories. Now I'm only looking at the attribute data, category, date, number, priority, and time. So I do want to keep all of this, but if I did not, I could uncheck anything that I don't want. So now I'll click Next. Here is a preview of how it's going to organize that data. It's best to try to remove as much 
or organize as much as you can in this window before getting into model space. Once you get to model space, um, what you can edit is limited. So for example, this count column, we have one of each block. That's not really important. So my options would be either right click on the count column to hide that column or down at the bottom, show count column can be unchecked. The second um, or the next column is called crime block. That's the name of the actual block. So they're all the same. Again, that's not important. So I can right click, hide that column or down here, show name column can be unchecked. Now I'm left with category, date, number, priority, and time. So all of this is important. I'm going to take the number column, click and drag that over to the left. That's gonna be my first column. If I click that header, it's put it in numerical order, okay? Then I will drag the date column, the time column, category priority. I'll leave the last two as is. So if you ever click on a header, it will put it in numerical order. But notice if I click on the date call, the date header, it goes one, one, zero, one, 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 two. So it's not really what we expect. To put it in numerical order, you need those zero placeholders in front. So number is the only one that has the right format. If I were to click priority, it goes high, low, medium, very high. So that's not the order that we expect either. When you organize with a column that has words, it's going to put it in alphabetical order. So in that case, you may have to say letter A represents high, letter B represents medium, and letter C represents low or something like that. So again, this alphabetizing of this column doesn't really make sense. So I'm gonna organize by number, that's in the correct order. And I think that's all we can do up to this point. So we'll click next. Here we get <clears throat> two choices. We can insert a table into our drawing or we can output the data into Excel, CSV, MBD, a DB and TXT, right? So sometimes if you're given blocks instead of AutoCAD points or civil 3D points, you might extract your coordinates, your point data into a CSV file. And then from that CSV file, you can import that as points in civil 3D. So that's just an example. Today, we're not going to export. We're going to insert this table into our drawing. I'm gonna click next. Here's just a preview of the style. Next, it says it's finished. Finish. It is very small because you probably put your tables in paper space, but I'm gonna put it just on the side and I'm going to zoom in. So this is the table. There are a couple things that I wanna fix. I don't need the empty uh, row at the top and I don't need these empty rows for row three and four. So when you select a table, you can click the upper left corner and you can see that it highlighted the table with a yellow outline. That's when you get this ribbon of tools. If you keep your cursor in the table, you'll see there's two symbols on your cursor. There's a chain link, which means it's linked to data, and there's a lock, which means currently you cannot edit. You can unlock it. So if I go to the ribbon and click cell locking, I can unlock. So now with my cursor in this table, the lock is, is gone. So I want to now select the table. Actually, yeah, select the table, select this upper left corner. I wanna get rid of that top row. So I'm highlighting it and I'm going to delete row. So that worked. I have two more rows that I would like to delete. I'm gonna click, click and drag through these rows. 
when I let go, it should highlight them. But notice how the delete rows button is grayed out now. So there are certain things it allows you to do, certain things it does not allow you to do. In this case, it is not allowing me to delete those rows. So a workaround would be click and drag through the three cells here and then merge those cells. So it's not actually removing rows, but we can make it look like it did. So once I've merged them, I can select the table. Actually, what I can do is highlight one of the cells and use the grip at the bottom to drag that row more narrow. So there are still three rows here, but when I escape, you can't tell. So then the next thing is what happens if the data changes? So I'm gonna be looking at crime number four, which was vehicle theft, and it was a high priority. So let's say that they found the car, they found the thief, it's all taken care of. It's no longer a high priority. So I wanna go over to my actual objects that collected the data. This one happens to be crime number four. If I look at the properties window, here it is, crime number four. It's no longer a high priority. I'm gonna just say the crime was solved. Right, so in properties, I've updated the data and I said solved. Now, going back to my little table here, crime number four has not updated. So what you need to do is select the table and then inside the table, right click, update table data links, right? So if I update table data links, it gives me two choices. I can update everything or I can retain the overridden contents. So what did we override? We overrode these three rows here where we merge them and shrink them down. Right, so that's something that I would like to, to keep, but let's see what happens. So if I retain the overridden contents, let's see, crime number four is now saying solved, so that worked. But if you look at these cells, the merge part went away for some of them. It's really strange, but merge cells usually has some, some issues where it won't save it when you're updating. So we do have to merge them one more time, just because. So just keep that in mind. If you did merge cells, when you update, you'll have to probably do it again. All right, so that's it. Hope that was helpful and useful for you when you're working with AutoCAD. Ad Masters offers online and classroom training for a variety of Autodesk software. For more information, go to www.cadmasters.com or give us a call at 925-939-1378.